You may completely disagree and class each and every one of these performances as vital elements that help make the movies in question the captivating, jaw-dropping and memorable treats they are. However, if some of these stars had it their way, they'd turn back the clock and do everything they can to improve what they rate as a pretty terrible or bang average piece of work. So I am Gareth, this is What Culture, and here are 10 actors who hated their performances in awesome movies. Number 10. Daniel Radcliffe didn't think he was very good in it. Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince Cast as the lead in what would become one of the biggest franchises in movie history at a seriously young age, Daniel Radcliffe not only grew up in front of fans' eyes, but he also noticeably evolved as a thespian throughout the Harry Potter series too. And the leading man himself definitely felt he was improving during each and every performance as the titular boy who lived. Right up until Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. Radcliffe has gone on record to state that not only does he feel he wasn't all that great in it, he bloody hates his one-note work in that sixth Potter flick, claiming he just got a bit complacent and what he was attempting to do with the performance just didn't come through in the end product, the fact the actor was coming off what he classed as his best film in The Order of the Phoenix likely made what he saw as a lack of growth in the follow-up that bit more noticeable for him. Half-Blood Prince still managed to land an impressive 84% Rotten Tomatoes score though, brought in nearly a billion billion dollars and earned the ever-growing lead a few decent reviews. So maybe it wasn't all quite as dreadful as it seemed, Danny boy. Number 9. Christopher Plummer was bored of his character, The Sound of Music Despite it ultimately ranking as the late great Christopher Plummer's most famous role, the star behind the character of Captain Von Trapp in The Sound of Music clearly didn't adore that part. In fact, Plummer once stated that he felt a bit bored with the character, feeling that while the team behind the flick did all they could to make the father of the Von Trapp clan seem more interesting, it was a bit like flogging a dead horse. Did that stop folks praising the star's work in the film for the next five decades? Not a chance. And his charismatic work certainly helped immortalise the Oscar-winning classic. Plummer also couldn't help but eventually admit that the feature itself was a very well-made movie, even if it still wasn't really his cup of tea. Despite the Academy Award winner likely not classing his Von Trapp performance as one he was truly proud of, also noting to THR how the part was the toughest of his career, and so awful and sentimental and gooey, Plummer's charming work in The Sound of Music will forever be remembered by lovers of the iconic musical. Now I want to know what is your favourite musical of all time? Is it The Sound of Music or something else? You let me know in the comment section down below. Number 8. Kate Winslet wishes she could do Rose again, Titanic. Without doubt one of the finest actors of her generation, if not the very best of the lot, Kate Winslet has consistently unleashed deeply convincing performances on the big and small small screen over the last few decades. But when looking back on arguably her most famous role as Rose in Titanic, one that even earned Winslet an Oscar nomination for Best Actress, this master of transforming into another human being actually admitted to wishing she could have done every single scene differently. Speaking to CNN about her showing in James Cameron's record-breaking hit, Winslet revealed how she constantly questions her choices when re-watching the flick, and struggles to even listen to her attempt at an American accent, stating it's it's awful, hopefully it's so much better now. Sure, Titanic soon turned Winslet into a household name, and the critically acclaimed picture eventually brought in a staggering $2.2 billion at the box office, but the sensational Brit still can't help but think, ah, I want to do that bit again. Can we go again, please, one more take, whenever she takes in this romantic classic. Number 7. Gary Oldman thinks his Sirius Black was mediocre, the Harry Potter series. Another Harry Potter star who was less than impressed by the work they brought to the Wizarding World, the legend behind the equally iconic Sirius Black, Gary Oldman, also didn't feel he was at his best in the series. But while Daniel Radcliffe did at least claim that he put in a good shift at some points in the franchise, his on-screen godfather surprisingly felt that his entire run in the Potterverse was mediocre. Oldman revealed this during an appearance on the Happy Sad Confused podcast, noting that if he'd bothered to actually read the novels the films were based on like the late Alan Rickman, there's a good chance he would have played the explosive wizard differently from the excellent Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban onwards. Even without taking in the books beforehand though, there's no denying that Oldman is one of the most compelling figures on screen whenever he shows up in Harry's life throughout the widely adored flicks. However, it's clear the revered thespian would have taken the character in a different direction had he known how things were going to turn out, and feels he just didn't produce the sort of magic he could have with that little extra research. Number 6. Megan Fox thinks she's terrible in it, Transformers Though you'd be forgiven for recoiling at the 
sight of the Transformers franchise showing up in a list with the words awesome movies in it, never forget that the first Autobot adventure in 2007, along with 2018's Bumblebee, was an absolute riot at times. Admittedly, the film that kicked off the waves of incomprehensible robot wars and childish humour certainly possessed a decent amount of exactly that, but it also boasted a number of genuinely thrilling set pieces, some quite likeable humans, and the first of many epic Optimus Prime speeches. One person who didn't necessarily enjoy sitting down to experience those first few hours of Robots in Disguise, however, was Michaela Barnes actor Megan Fox, going as far as to declare that she was terrible in it. When talking to Entertainment Weekly, the eventual Jennifer's Body star just didn't feel that she was honest or realistic during what was her first real big screen performance. Admittedly, Fox was never going to pick up an Academy Awards nod for her turn in the popcorn blockbuster, but the newcomer still did enough during this first Michael Bay Transformers ride to become Hollywood's latest breakout star at the time. Number 5. Amanda Seyfried wants to redo the film completely Les Miserables Similarly to the mighty Kate Winslet, if given the opportunity to go back and completely redo her part in Tom Hooper's big screen adaptation of Les Miserables, Amanda Seyfried would seemingly bite that person's hand clean off. Singing, even within a nice cosy studio, is remarkably daunting for some, so you can only imagine how stressful having to warble through some of the most iconic songs in musical theatre history live must have been. Seyfried has since noted that she still has nightmares about the various times she was required to let out a tune live as Cosette in the 2012 box office hit, a hugely emotional feature that also ended up being nominated for eight Academy Awards. The actor added during an appearance on the Actors on Actors variety series that her voice just wasn't in the place it needed to be for the role, calling it weak before admitting that she was very unhappy with her singing. Seyfried is perhaps being a little unfair to herself here, as her rather solid voice undoubtedly wasn't the worst on show in the feature. That title unfortunately belongs to the otherwise magnificent Russell Crowe. Since then though, Seyfried has at least committed to strengthening her voice, and now finally feels like she's in a position to properly play Gazette if she ever got another chance. Number 4. Emma Watson thought her accent was terrible, the perks of being a wallflower. After spending the majority of her on-screen career playing the iconic role of young British witch Hermione Granger in the Harry Potter series, hearing Emma Watson confidently unleash an American accent as Sam in the perks of being a wallflower admittedly felt a little bit odd at first, but it wasn't long before folks had gotten used to the new sound coming out of Watson's mouth, as she stole many a scene opposite the likes of Logan Lerman and Ezra Miller in the terrific coming-of-age drama. Watson herself didn't feel that her stab at the American twang was up to scratch, however, telling MTV News that she thought it sounded terrible and was really nervous about the whole thing. The British thespian may not have felt she smashed it out of the park with her accent work here, but the strong reviews that were sent her way in the wake of the film's release told a different story, with some outlets even going as far as to state that the American way suited her. She did sound pretty damn good. Number 3. Anya Taylor-Joy didn't think she'd work again, The Witch Despite still only being just 27 years old, the marvellous Anya Taylor-Joy has already brought a ridiculous amount of exceptional performances to screens in some of the best films of the last decade. The brilliant feature that unquestionably put The Northman and Last Night in Soho star on the map, however, was Robert Egger's 2015 folk horror by the name of The Witch. Here, Taylor-Joy plays the role of Tom Zinn, a youngster wrongly accused of practicing witchcraft, and swiftly announced herself as an acting force to be reckoned with. But Taylor Joy certainly didn't feel that way after watching the flick a few hours before its Sundance premiere. In fact, the actor told THR that she was devastated after sitting down to watch the film before the witch's audience screening. On top of thinking she'd never work again after this first major performance, Taylor Joy also felt she'd let down the people she loved most in the world, and just didn't think she did it right. Thankfully, not a single soul alive shared that opinion after experiencing her fantastic breakthrough turn for themselves, with Taylor Joy only going from strength to strength in the years that followed. Number 2. Adam Driver Hated What He Did Inside Lewin Davis In case you weren't aware, there was a time there when Adam Driver did not enjoy watching back his performances, or the sound of his own singing voice. The Star Wars thespian infamously stormed out of an interview back in 2019, after a radio host insisted on playing a scene of him blasting out a tune in Marriage Story. Despite the actor making it clear, he disliked watching his work back. This isn't the only piece of movie singing Driver wasn't in a rush to relive though, as the hugely self-critical actor also hated what he did on screen as Al Cody in the Coen Brothers universally acclaimed Inside Lewin Davis, a role that required him to let out some backup vocals for the memorable Please Mr. Kennedy 
Lee folk song in one scene. Though he's still his own biggest critic and will likely never fully approve of his own work, the consistently outstanding thespian revealed on the Who's Talking to Chris Wallace show recently that he has at least begun to watch everything he appears in over the last few years. Driver feels that's probably the best way to keep himself from getting stuck in a right way or a set way of doing anything. He's probably right, but man, he's harsh on himself. Number one, Christian Bale doesn't feel he quite nailed it. The Dark Knight trilogy. For many, Christian Bale's version of The Dark Knight will forever be the definitive Batman. Not the man himself, though. Nope, the British acting powerhouse was actually left feeling a little disappointed once his time in the cape and cowl came to an end. When talking to Yahoo about his run as Bruce Wayne in Christopher Nolan's adored and massively successful Batman trilogy, Bale explained how he just felt like he didn't quite achieve everything he wanted to in the films. Along with being one of the only people on the planet who thought he didn't nail the part of the bat, the star also admitted that Heath Ledger rocking up to set and being, in Bale's mind, so much more interesting than him, also ended up ruining whatever plans he thought he had for the titular hero. In the end, though, both masters of their craft definitely produced instantly iconic work during the Dark Knight series. With this pair of mesmerizing on-screen enemies helping Nolan create a bona fide modern classic, in that 2008 middle entry in particular, we all thought you nailed it, Christian, and that's what matters.